Hello, um, good afternoon. We have um, Dr. Tor Am, who's the project director for the Norwegian Ministry of Health. Um, he will make his presentation, and the title of his presentation is um, The Coordination Reform in, in Norway. And um, so, Dr. Am, without um, wasting too much time, I will just ask you to please proceed in, in, in your presentation. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's okay, Sheila. Thank you. Uh, thanks for inviting me to talk about uh, our coordination reform in Norway. Uh, this is a health in all policies reform to ensure quality and sustainability in the years to come in Norway. And um, I'll say something about our healthcare system uh, and the goals for the reform and what we do to ensure that this is happening. Um, the Norwegian healthcare system is based on uh, the primary healthcare uh, in our 428 municipalities. And the municipalities in Norway are responsible for the home assistance and home nursing, service housing, group living arrangements, nursing homes, rehabilitation, family medicine, and casualty ward. Uh, while the hospitals are a, a national um, responsibility, the state is responsible for all the hospitals in Norway. Uh, and it, our uh, laws uh, say that both the national and the local authorities are responsible for providing health services in such a way that each patient feels that everybody is working together. Um, the budgets in Norway to all these healthcare systems, both the primary healthcare and the specialized healthcare, comes from taxation, uh, not from insurance fee like in many other countries. Um, and um, I'm here saying about how much money do we use on the specialized healthcare and how much do we use on the municipal uh, municipality primary health care. And as you see, uh, we have use about half the money on the hospitals and half the money on health and care services in the, in the municipalities. Uh, we could have a long discussion if do we have a lot of money to do these services in Norway or not. And this is a big discussion, big, big discussion in Norway. Uh, uh, because um, it's difficult to compare how much money we use here uh, with other countries. Um, it's uh, different accounting standards around the world uh, and um, spending, how much money we spend on long-time nursing is a part of our uh, health budget and also the purchasing, purchasing power in each country uh, affects this uh, uh, this economy. So I can say if we are uh, probably we are uh, on the average in the Western world uh, when we are talking about how much money do we use on healthcare services in Norway. Um, why do we have a reform in uh, this coordination reform? Um, we have this list, and I guess that most of you from different parts of the world, we'll see that these are, um, these are challenges that most countries in the world have. Uh, in our system in Norway, we lack incentives to prevent and limit disease. Uh, our quality of healthcare could be better. Uh, patients' needs for coordinated services are not being sufficiently met uh, always. Um, we have, uh, of course, a changing range of illnesses in the population, uh, and we see in our uh, in our in our country we see increasing gap between expectations and actual services. In my years uh, as a doctor and as a leader in our system, uh, I've seen that all our services are becoming better and better, and we are able to give more and more services, but the expectations from the population grow faster. 
So uh, we have a, a big challenge in this field to to talk about what we are able to do and uh, and what people expect us to give. Um, but of course, we as the rest of the world have a big challenge uh, uh, to the demographic changes in the years to uh, coming. Uh, more elderly people and uh, less uh, people uh, in the working age recruitment and competence will be a big challenge for us. So we have we have to change the way we work to ensure quality in the years to come. Um, and this, uh, I guess, most of you will will recognize as uh, as challenges in your own uh, countries. Um, my experience as a long time leader in the health system is that um, in many ways it's easy to be a leader when we we are finding what is the problem we it's easy all often to find uh, the way what should we do about the problem the the very difficult the most difficult part is to ensure change how do we get things working when we have uh, we have said this is the diagnosis, this is the treatment, but how could we get these big organizations, a lot of people, to work in a different way? So we are we are aware that uh, we have to. Have, the, the big question is how to ensure change. Uh, we have to understand that we have to change, and uh, we have to be willing to change. Uh, we have to understand what we must do to change and the difficult part, how to do it. And it's, of course, it's very important to evaluate. Are we on track? Are we doing this change? Um, we have been working in our welfare state for many years, uh, uh, preparing for the, uh, the challenges ahead, the demographic changes and all the other points that uh, that I listed uh, earlier. Uh, we had a reform uh, from 1997. Uh, we had a reform in 2005 in the care in the area care for the elderly. Uh, we had a big labor and welfare reform in 2006, and we had a, a brave pension reform. Uh, the parliament uh, made new path, new laws. Uh, made uh, difficult decisions, uh, tell, uh, designing the pensions for the people in Norway in the years to come uh, in the scale that is uh, sustainability and, and uh, possible to, to deliver in the years to come. So the coordination reform is, is a new reform with the same purpose as all these other reforms. And many of you will recognize that these are changes uh, reform, uh, healthy, all policies, reforms, uh, all of them. Um, the coordination reform is really two reforms in one. It's a public health reform with a clear goal. Uh, how to, how could we uh, get a healthier population? How could we work better with health promotion? Uh, better with health protection? How could we? Uh, intervene earlier when people have problems with the health. And the other reform, which is part of this coordination reform, is a health care reform uh, where the goal is more effective health care services with higher quality. We want to strengthen the primary health care. We want to give uh, patients a new role, more important role, empowerment uh, is an um, important word here and now. Uh, and we want to give the specialized health care, the, the hospitals, a new role uh, in, in the system. And we want better cooperation. So as you see, the coordination reform is not only about coordination, that is only a mean among many other means. Um, this was a very complex um, reform uh, when passed through Parliament in 2011. Uh, we had um, four types of means, and all of these different means should work together and, and change the direction so, in, in, so that we, 
uh, reach our goals, a healthier population and a more effective healthcare services with higher quality. Uh, we had a lot of legal means. We passed, uh, there were changes in uh, all in all 47 different laws. Uh, we have a new economic means. We have professional means uh, with um, uh, more national standards. We want to measure quality. We want to become better in using evidence-based, uh, ensuring evidence-based practice, etc. And we have organizational means. But the most important here, I would say, is the legal means, the economic means, and the professional means. This is not a new, or it's not a new organizing uh, reform. That's that has not been a big part of this report. Um, one of the difficult parts of this reform is that uh, there are a lot of stakeholders here. Um, a, lot, a lot of stakeholders are responsible for implementing these changes that we want. Uh, all the municipalities, uh, 428 of them, all the hospitals, all the county municipalities, uh, the universities, the colleges, the ministries and directorates. All of them have uh, b different parts uh, and different responsibilities and all of them have to work together. And this is, of course, very, very difficult when we talk about uh, autonomic parts, autonomic instances that is responsible each, each of them. Um, the public health reform to describe in short, uh, we had a new law uh, passed uh, uh, and working from the 1st of January 2012, um, where we, the Parliament said that each municipality uh, are, is responsible for, for having a public health plan. Uh, and in this plan, they should describe uh, what is the population uh, health determinants and strategic planning with this knowledge. Um, and this is not a health, um, only a health plan. Uh, technical sector, school sector, kindergartens, uh, cultural sector, everybody in the municipalities are responsible with that their share in, in a good public health plan locally. Um, in the plan, they should, each municipality should describe what is the situation in our municipality, what can we do about it, and, and it, it says in the law that we have to have political involvement and political decisions in each municipality about how to work with this. Um, the healthcare reform affects both the primary healthcare and the hospitals. Uh, the primary health care uh, are challenged to work uh, better with uh, patients with chronic diseases and patients not able to get help when necessary. How could we uh, work better, give better health services to these people? And the municipalities in Norway uh, also are challenged to have 24-7 services not only planned health care, but also ability to give help when needed. Because when the municipality can give help 24-7, uh, the patients not always do have to go to the hospitals when in, in need of help at night, in the evening, in the weekends, etc. Um, the specialized health care, the hospitals, um, have new, three new uh, challenges to work with. Uh, in uh, before, of course, they should do a good job with the patients coming in. Uh, they have a responsibility for for research, for education, and educating patients. But in they also now have a responsibility to, to work with the municipality uh, in efforts to reduce the need for health care. And that's, uh, in, for many hospitals, that's new 
they're not used to work in that way. They're not work. They're not used to think how could we uh, how can we get fewer patients. Uh, it's more it's more normal to to work. How could we take on more patients to earn more money? Um, the hospitals in Norway, as in the rest of the world, has been working with um, with better quality in the form of um, centralization and specialization, more specialization, uh, uh, and of course that also uh, is the case still. But our hospitals now also are being challenged from the state in what can we decentralize? What kind of services from this hospital could we give uh, in the municipalities close to the primary health care? And we also should plan what can we do to enable the municipalities and the primary health care to do their part of the job. Both parts, both the primary health care and the specialized health care uh, are uh, are now um, uh, in by law. Uh, they they should have agreements, treaties for cooperation between municipalities and hospitals. Uh, they have to, we have to work all parts with internal and external coordination, of course, uh, and the all parts should talk about how could we ensure ensure right service at the right place at the right time, both in the specialized healthcare and, and in the primary healthcare, of course. Uh, and both of us, both the primary healthcare and the hospitals, have to work more. What, how could we plan for the patient's uh, healthcare services? How could we plan that what what how would the how would our hospitals look like? How would our primary health care look like if we ask our patients what they want? Our new government uh, wants us to make new plans with this in our heads. New and more important role for the patients, more empowerment thinking. Um, this is a difficult reform with many instances uh, having their uh, own uh, responsibilities. And um, therefore, the government said that this is a long-term program for necessary changes. It's not a reform that everything is okay from the 1st of January 2012. Uh, this is uh, a long-term program, and we should learn uh, from what is happening, uh, how could we change our means if we see that they are not working? Uh, how could we get knowledge so that we can uh, uh, get new means into the system, new types of laws, new type of economic means, new type of um, organizational means, etc. So the government has ordered a long term evaluation of stated goals, strategies, and efforts, um, and a research program has been set up. Uh, we have a national coordinating group with all stakeholders represented, meeting regularly to change strategies and efforts if necessary. And we have a national network helping us with implementation and reports to the national coordinating group. And these two elements, the national coordinating group with all stakeholders and this national network, is a new way of working with reforms in Norway. And uh, so far, we have uh, our, um, we think that this is a very good way to do uh, work with, with the implementation part of the reform. And uh, we are also already now talking about that this could be a good way with also with other types of reforms with, with many stakeholders. Um, what has happened since the 1st of January 2012? Um, my experience and uh, what uh, the reports are telling us, uh, we think that there's an increasing awareness of the need to change. And as you saw earlier, if we have to get, if we are to get change, we have to start with the awareness, the need for change. And with 
I feel that this is about to happen in Norway now. Um, the municipalities are positive to new responsibilities, but of course are worried about the financing. Um, the new roles for the hospitals that I described earlier, uh, I think they are not in demand yet and uh, not acknowledged in the hospitals. So this is a, something we have to work more with in the years to come. Um, but we see uh, effects of some of the means, the, one of the economic means uh, was to get uh, reduce the number of dis discharged patients waiting in hospital for necessary services from the municipalities. And the number is halved since the 1st of January 2012. So this has been a success so, so, so far. Um, uh, we lack instruments, economic means uh, in the field of services for psychiatric patients and patients with addictive problems. So that is something that the government is working with now. Um, we see that uh, new 24-7 services are being set up in the municipalities. And uh, so far we, we can see that uh, there are uh, lesser admissions to hospitals among elderly people, uh, from 3 to 10 percent redu reduction in the admission of people above 80 years of age. And we think that this is, this has something to do with new services in the, in the municipality. And um, at last we have, there's no doubt we have increased cooperations between municipalities, between the 428 municipalities and between municipalities and hospitals. So we are on track, but we haven't reached our goals, of course. And last year we had our, a new government and we were um, uh, we didn't know uh, what they would say about this reform. Uh, but uh, I'm very glad to say that um, the, the new government has stated um, many times that the goals for this reform still stands, but they want to change some of the means in the reform. Um, they have launched a municipality reform now uh, and want us in Norway to reduce the number of municipalities. And uh, this is uh, also important if we want the municipalities to take on work that now is being uh, done in the hospital. So we want fewer and stronger municipalities uh, with increased responsibilities in the years to come. And we are, uh, we look forward now to the next year because the government is working with the national plan for public health. Uh, uh, they are working with a national plan for the primary health care and a plan for a national hospital plan. So there's a lot of things happening in our healthcare system uh, right now. And um, now we, uh, Eric, do you say something about how to do these questions. Hello. Yes. Um, well, thank you so much, Dr. Am, uh, for your comprehensive presentation. Um, what we would like to do now is um, take a minute or two to invite any questions from those who um, have participated. And if they could send this through, um, so we will allow a two minute um, time. For, for questions and answers to be sent through to you, Dr. Am. Thank you, Dr. Am. We have um, some questions. Um, the first is, um, what instruments or means are being used to raise awareness and how successful have these been? Um, thank you. Um, we have uh, tried to um, play on uh, a lot of instruments to, 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 to ensure this. But uh, of course, we have been working with uh, websites. Uh, um, this network that I told about in, our, my, in my presentation, uh, my role has been to lead this network. Uh, 
on behalf of the health department and, and the network. Uh, we are um, making weekly reports and sending these reports to the government, uh, telling about uh, what is happening around uh, uh, the, the country, uh, both in the media, but also in meetings, uh, different sort of uh, happenings, uh, new services, etc. So, and we we display these on these reports on websites so that everybody can get new ideas from other parts in the, in the country. Uh, we, many of us, um, and I have been traveling a lot these last couple of years, two or three years, giving lectures around uh, the country on behalf of the health department. Um, all everything being paid by the health department, so this has this it no cost to to those who invite me or us, and uh, we also got money to um, to um, to get the four um, experienced health people uh, uh, working as advisors full time around the country, helping with the reform and, and the, the implementation part. Um, I, I guess we could talk a lot about this, but this maybe this is these are the, the most important moment uh, po points uh, from your question. Okay. Um, I see that uh, Dr. Rundbeck uh, asked about um, uh, about electronic medical records in support to the correlation between levels of care. And um, in our evaluation reports being made the, in these days, uh, what has happened now since uh, 2012, uh, I am stating in the report to the government that we have had a revolution in the, uh, the electronic uh, medical records, uh, records support. Um, in the start, uh, in January 2012, a few uh, uh, hospitals had electronic medical uh, uh, communication with uh, uh, the healthcare in the uh, municipalities. Uh, and uh, we had uh, stories in uh, in our newspapers that old fax machines were being used when we wanted to uh, talk about or give instructions or give information about our patient both ways. But today, uh, I think that uh, almost all of the 428 municipalities and all the hospitals are able to communicate with messages from one to another. Um, uh, in, I also work at St. Olaf's uh, University Hospital in Trondheim, and in the mid-region of Norway, we are now uh, working seriously with, uh, with um, plans to go out together with the municipalities 84 municipalities and four hospitals in our region want to buy a, the same electronic patient record system. So that all, and there's a new law passed in the parliament that say that this is now, uh, le this is legal. We can do this now. And it has not been uh, so before. Uh, uh, today it's not possible for a hospital to have the same journal system, the same patient record system as, a, as, as the, um, the primary health care. But the new laws are helping us here, and I think a lot will happen now in the years to come, and the government is very specific that they are working towards the goal, one uh, inhabitant in Norway and one health journal. So it's an ambitious goal, and we hope to reach it in a few years. Um, and at last you asked about the um, new payment system, the uh, economic means that I talked about. And we have um, really three different types of payment systems. Uh, 
first of all, uh, we moved uh, some money from the hospital budget to the municipalities, uh, and at the same time said that from the 1st of January 2012, the municipalities uh, should pay the whole bill from day one when uh, nurse um, patients uh, able to being uh, to going out from the hospital if they were still in hospital because uh, they were waiting for nursing facilities, etc. Uh, the, the, the municipalities had to pay the whole bill, and this has been very effective. And uh, we see that uh, this, the number of these patients have been halved, or even more than that, now in in one or two years. Um, we also moved some money from hospital budget to the municipalities and telling the municipalities that, that they should build up these 24-7 um, services, new beds uh, where, um, where they could take in patients uh, who doesn't need to go to the hospital 24-7 in the municipality. And um, we think that these are uh, how, uh, this is also an, uh, a new and uh, very exciting uh, new service in the municipalities that the, the, we think will be important in the years to come. Uh, and last, least of all, um, the last um, uh, payment system or economic mean, uh, where that we also moved um, uh, money from hospital budgets to the municipalities and saying that the municipalities should pay 20% of the bills in of all somatic patients in hospitals. Uh, and we wanted to do that because we wanted the, the municipalities to be aware of uh, their inhabitants' use of hospitals and uh, stimulate the municipalities to think, what can we do to pre uh, prevent or giving other types of services to the patient so that they don't need to go to the hospital. This this was uh, under debate in Parliament and uh, and uh, the la our last government uh, uh, made the decision and started up this uh, municipality part payment system, 20% part payment for somatic patients. But our existing government, our new government, uh, were not uh, in agreement with this. So now from the 1st of January, this payment system is out again. Uh, they say that um, they will build up the primary health care, strengthen the primary health care, and that this uh, should be as effective in uh, preventing unnecessary use of the hospitals. Um, and Sheila is asking a question like last year. Um, um, I think we, um, is, you asked about uh, how, who are the stakeholders uh, uh, you feel have yet to come on board to help drive forward. Um, very important stakeholders uh, in our uh, reform, of course, are the universities and the colleges. And um, I think we have a lot to do to, to talk together with them. They are uh, now they are used to being very autonomic and. Uh, uh, we don't have the arenas to have uh, the discussions uh, all the time with them. So that, the educational system uh, is one uh, element here uh, where we should talk better. Uh, I think that maybe it's our main challenge right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Am, again. Um, I don't see any other questions um, coming through. So um, on behalf of 
Eric de Rodenbeck, um, our Director General, and even um, Eric Kreiberg, who's um, the IHF um, President de Designate, who's attending this um, webinar. Um, we would like to thank you for your time and the presentation, and we look forward to to meeting with you again in the next one. Thank you and bye-bye.